So a lot of people are having trouble hiring right now. And I don't mean they're having trouble finding people to work. I mean, they're having trouble finding people who want to work. And, you know, I, I, I hear it's that sense of entitlement. Oh, it's the millennials. It's the Zs. They, you know, they don't have any work ethic. You know, I don't know that it's one generation because I see plenty of Gen Xers who act, you know, like entitled idiots too. So, and baby boomers who act like, act like entitled idiots. So, I mean, I see across the generations, plenty of people who act like entitled idiots. Like they want to do the minimum work and expect that's going to get them ahead. Or they're, you know, fighting every direction that you give them. So trying to hire right now, and, I, and I've just been through this process, trying to hire right now and find the right candidate. I mean, you have to ask the right questions. So when I got to a point where I'm at now where, um, let me back up. When I got to the point a month ago where I needed to hire somebody, I Google searched best interview questions, best uh, job listings, best place to list a job. I asked my colleagues, I asked my leaders. I asked, I got as much input as possible from the people surrounding me as to what they did and what worked and what didn't work. And my first round that I posted the job list, the job out, like the job listing I felt was kind of generic, but I, I went with it because honestly it was the first time in, you know, 15 years I posted a job listing or 13 years. Anyway, so in the, the response back, and I'm not saying the candidates were poor, I'm saying they were very broad. Like the, the qualifications that I needed were very specific and I wasn't really seeing that. I was seeing I was seeing a, a, just a broad spectrum of the types of candidates that, I, I mean, I, I didn't think they were good for the role. Now, not to say they were bad candidates for other roles or, you know, whatever. I'm not trying to bag on the candidates. All I'm saying is they weren't right for that role. And I ended up not hiring anybody from the first round. So, regroup. I got some more input from a great leadership coach I have. Um, I got some uh, to collaborate with my leaders when I, I told them, I said, that, that listing is just not effective. So we scrapped that listing more or less. We, we took the best pieces of it. We scrapped the rest. We made the title of the job a lot more focused on what the expectations of the job actually was. It's not the name of the job. Like that's not the title that person is, is going to have that I've now hired. It's not the title that person is going to have. But I felt the title of the job listing needed to be more specific and more focused on what was the actual expectation of the job duties. And then we honed the listing into being more specific about what we were looking for and what the data, some of the day to day would be. And I got to tell you, I cut the pool of candidates down by about a third, maybe, maybe about, a, yeah, I would say a third, a quarter to a third. So, and I got a much better, and I, this is going to sound really bad, but a much better quality of candidate. And I don't mean that as a dig on the previous candidates. I'm just saying for what I was looking for, they were more apt, uh, more, um, better fitting to what I was looking for. That's a better way to put it. Cause I don't want to bag on those candidates They're They were great, uh, great candidates, uh, qualified people, but just not for what I was looking for. So get to the interview, get to the interviews. Interviews were much more productive. I found a much better, uh, pool that were a lot more skilled to what I was looking for. So the problem with what, not the problem with, but the issue I had is I had to really look at the time that I would spend training that person to get them up to speed. Now, probably any of the candidates that, it, that I ultimately put into my second round, any of those would have fit into the job role. But I had to really look at how much time am I gonna spend training this person before they're 
dealer facing ready. And that's really what, what my, my, um, and, and everybody else's final decision came to is how much time is this going to take me to get this person to where they're ready to take clients? And that's what made my ultimate decision. So where I'm going with for the people who are putting out job applications, go back and look at your job application because if you're putting out this or job uh, posting, excuse me, if you're putting out the same posting and job description every time and you're not getting any improvement in the applicants, so let's go back to the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result, right? So go back and scrap your listing. Like literally don't edit it, just throw it away and start over. What are some of the actual day-to-day -day duties of the job? What are the expectations of the level of skill and experience that you're looking for? Speak to that. And I'm not saying we need to have five years of account management experience. I need a minimum of five years of experience in handling these specific type of accounts in these specific silos. So I need five years of experience of someone handling automotive dealerships specifically in the service department marketing silo. Be very specific with your job listing and you're going to get people who are going to be, who are answering who are better quality for that specific skill. And for job seekers on the other side of that, I'm going to give you guys some advice too. Read the entire job listing, job posting, and then read it again. And then read it again. <laughs> Seriously. Because there were some that the job listing that I had specifically said that I would like three years of analytics and AdWords experience. And I still had, even this time, mind you, it was much, much less. But I had this time people who told me, not, not one, but multiple people that told me they had zero experience with analytics and AdWords. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. What I'm saying is what I'm looking at is my time to train you to get to where I need you to be to use analytics and AdWords and to use a, a proprietary dashboard to use all these things. That's all I'm looking at. I'm not saying you're not qualified to do it, but I have to be, I have to look at my time and my team's time to train you to get up to speed of where we need you to be. So if you really honestly don't have that experience and that is part of the job description, you need to ask, is this something I, and I'm not telling you don't apply for it, but I'm telling you be upfront about it when you're applying for the job, A, and then B, because a lot of times people weren't upfront about it and it came out in the interview. Um, I even had one person straight up lie about it. So that's kind of what I'm saying is, I don't think anybody, anymore like I don't think it used to be I mean when I was working in sales people were just looking for a body I don't think I filled out I filled out one job application my entire time my, my sold cars every other time I never filled out a job application it was just I got a call from a manager who wanted me at their store or I got a call from a buddy who said hey you got to come up here the pay plans better or you know what I mean and that's how sales works I'm not unique in that that happened a lot with a lot of sales people but what I'm saying is I think those times are are going by the wayside. Like it's more and more about your skill set, about your closing ability, about there's a lot more pieces and cogs in that wheel before people are making hiring decisions. So if you know that you're lacking in Google Analytics experience, Google Skillshop is free. Like go get your Google Analytics certification. There's a ton of YouTube videos that are free. YouTube LinkedIn Learning has a fantastic GA4 course that I'm taking right now. Um, if you wanna pay an extra 30 bucks a month for LinkedIn Learning, but there are free courses on YouTube on navigating all those things and educate yourself with it. You can start a free analytics account and you can set up AdWords campaigns on your own for a business that you have, for a side business. If you're doing consulting, if you're doing freelancing, start it up and utilize it and familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with it. Don't be that person that I have to pass by or that someone has to pass by because you're going to take more time training to get where I need you to be than the other guy. Just something that I experienced this past uh, month that I thought I'd share. So hope it helps you in your hiring. Thanks for watching. Happy selling.